Thanks for your company on AM Agenda. I'm joined now by the Shadow Communications Minister, Jason Clare. Thanks for your time today. We just heard from the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, speaking about the sanctions that the US and the EU have imposed on Russia. It's clearly not a priority for Australia to uh, join those countries in these sanctions against Russia because we need their cooperation in order to complete the mission to, to bring back the victims of MH17. Well, that's right, David. But anything that uh, puts pressure on Russia to help to restore peace to that region and to get clear and unrestricted access to the site is a fundamentally good thing. Our priority, as the Prime Minister has said, is to bring our people home. We've been frustrated in attempts to get to the site over the last three days. Uh, that's not good enough. Uh, President Obama has made the point that uh, the Russian government are continuing to, to support, to train and to arm the separatist rebels. And if more pressure can be placed on Russia to make sure that the rebels pull back and get us access to the site so we can bring our people home, then that's a very good thing. So you believe that uh, imposing these sanctions could actually uh, help the, the mission to, to bring those, those remains home by, by pressuring Russia? Do you, do you, are you actually saying that Australia should join with the EU and the US? Oh, look, I'm not privy to the conversations that the Prime mm. Minister had, has had with President Obama. He'd be in a better position to, to give you the answer to that question. Uh, the Prime Minister's right to say that our priority must be to take the steps necessary with the countries of that region to be able to get in and get our people out. Um, the general point I'd make, though, is that when the world comes together and says this conflict uh, needs to end, innocent people are being killed, and we use economic sanctions to help put pressure on Russia to do that, uh, then, then I think that's a good thing. OK, well, returning home, and the Prime Minister also spoke about uh, shipbuilding in this country and pointed out there have been very significant cost <coughs> overruns, very significant delays as well. It's off the back of this story in the Australian newspaper today by Cameron Stewart that suggests that the government is considering sacking its own naval shipbuilder and installing British defence giant BAE Industries to rescue the air warf warfare destroyer project. What would be Labor's view on that? Well, David, I'd, I'd make two points. Uh, first is this is apparently part of a report which is still secret. So the first point I'd make is that the government should release the report so we can have a proper discussion about the state of the program. The second point I'd make is that uh, if you've got a shipbuilding industry where you make warships, then you stop building warships and then you make them again, uh, then you're going to have problems in construction. The best way to do this is to have a continuous shipbuilding program. Uh, Last century we built the Anzac frigates, there were troubles at the start and then the ships were built properly and they've been very successful. We stopped building ships, now we're building them again. Uh, on current trajectory we're going to stop building ships and then build future frigates down the track. Now all of that means that you're not as efficient and productive as you can be and you have cost overruns and that's why Labor in government and Labor in opposition is now urging the government to make sure that we build a sustainable, long-term, continuous shipbuilding industry. That'll be important not just for the warships that we need to build, but also for the future submarine project. So should that sustainable shipbuilding industry be government-owned or should it be to the cheapest bidder? Well, it, no, it doesn't necessarily need to be government-owned. Uh, and this project, an alliance project, has been built by three major companies, the uh, ASC based in Adelaide, but also BAE based in Melbourne, and Forjax, which is based in the Hunter in New South Wales. Um, now, you know, that's, that's not a bad way to go about building those projects. Uh, you need to do it in a very efficient way, uh, would be the point I would make. The, the way to make this efficient, though, is to make sure you've got a continuous shipbuilding program, not a stop-start program, like we've had in the past and like we potentially will have in the future. OK, we're turning to the budget and we see figures that uh, the Financial Review is reporting on regarding the mining tax that just $600,000 was reaped in the three months to the end of June. That means it's about $300 million for the last financial year, less than half 
of what Labor expected to, to reap from the mining tax. And yet the opposition is still, along with the crossbenchers, uh, blocking the repeal of uh, not just the mining tax, but the associated measures that would blow an even bigger hole in the budget. Well, look, I, I just don't think Joe Hockey gets it. It's not just this, it's the budget more generally. Um, uh, Joe Hockey has you know, handed down a, bu a budget which is as popular as anthrax, and the book's come out that said he wants to make even deeper cuts. Um, he needs to go back to the drawing board here and come up with some better ideas. Nobody in his party or any other party thinks that putting a tax on people to go to the doctor or increasing the cost of university fees or cutting the pension or in this particular area here cutting superannuation uh, entitlements for people on low incomes or the school kids bonus being cut is a good idea. Uh, so Joe Hockey, if he seriously wants to be Prime Minister, should say, OK, I've got this wrong and I'll go back to the drawing board and come up with some better ideas that will win the support of the parliament. Mm. Uh, what about this warning from Standard & Poor's that the Australian uh, government must keep debt below 30% to maintain its AAA credit rating? I is that at risk? That's the second ratings agency to sort of sound this sort of signal? Uh, I'd make the general point to you, David, that we want to work constructively with the government on this, but there are better ways to tackle some of the challenges in the budget than putting a tax on someone to go to the doctor or doubling the cost of university degrees or cutting the pension. One thing the government could do straight away is to ditch their paid parental leave scheme that gives millionaire mums $50,000 to have a baby. That's just one example of some of the things the government could do and we've put down other ideas for them as well. So I'd reiterate you, the point. You say you want to work constructively uh, with the government. Does that mean that there are some of its, uh, its savings measures that Labor would considering, consider backing if, if there were some changes? Well, we already have. Uh, we already have. We've, we've backed but, but some that have gone that are, through that the parliament. But the ones that are being blocked at the moment. Uh, and there are, there, are others, there are others that are yet to come to the parliament where we've said, David, that we would support some changes to family tax benefit B. But there are others where we will not change. Uh, the Labor Party set up Medicare, we built it and we'll defend it, we'll stop the government from their attempts to try and break down Medicare and create a two-tier health system. We won't support the government's attempts to create a university, a US university style system where degrees double in price and we will not allow the government to cut the real increases in the pension. Jason Clare, Shadow Communications Minister, thanks so much for that, we're out of time. Thanks very much David.